Hey guys, I got some more information about the DTV visa. I just got it myself and I thought I'd tell you about the process of what it was like to get it. And I got something to say, like it was super duper easy, uh, but it wasn't without uh, hiccups. There was a couple of things that happened that I think you should be aware of. In any case, I got it now and I thought I'd tell you about it. So the first thing that you got to do is you got to apply for the visa either at an embassy or digitally, depending on what region you're in. A friend of mine, he traveled to Jakarta to do it as an Australian passport holder. Um, he had to hand in his passport in Jakarta and the embassy took care of it. A few days later, I think three days later, he got it back. I did it in Norway where I had to do the whole application online. I never submitted the passport and my visa is a digital one. So what does that mean? Um, well, first I had to prepared the documents that I needed to send in. And that's where the first hiccup uh, came, but I'll, I'll get back to that. So basically you got to have the documents and the documents are, you need to have a picture of yourself, like a passport photo. Um, you need to have a picture of your passport. You need to have a certificate that says that like that showcase that you have a regular income as a freelancer or as a salary, as a, as a remote worker. Um, that was my case. That's what I decided to do. I'm employed in a Norwegian company. Um, and I needed to have a bank statement that showed that I had at least 500,000 baht in one account at the same time as a bank statement. Now, I had that amount spread out over multiple accounts when I wanted to apply. Um, and it was not enough for the embassy that was processing this to see that it was spread over multiple accounts. They wanted it to be in one account and they, they wanted it to be the bank statement that you get at the end of the month so that they can see the whole transcript of what happened that full month. Um, so for me, that meant I had to wait until the end of the month. But first I had to transfer the money into one account and then I had to submit the document that, that showcased that correct amount. Um, another thing that I had to submit was like uh, the employment letter or the employment contract. But after I submitted that one, they got back to me the next day and they said, we want another document. We want to have the most recent uh, certificate of income. I applied on the 1st of October and the, the most recent letter Got, I, I got that on the 1st of October. So the next day they will ask for the September letter, um, which is fine. Uh, it just extended the process by one more day. By the way, the whole process took three days. The embassy says that the process will take five to 10 days or something like that. For me, it took three. This is probably going to depend on how quickly you are applying. If you're applying quickly uh, off season, then you're probably not going to have a queue. Uh, but at the moment, yeah, it took three, three um, days. Super easy. Um, the Norwegian price was about 11,000 baht or 3,500 Norwegian. This is roughly $300. It's about the same everywhere, but there are some places that, like Australia, I think is pretty expensive. Uh, New Zealand may be expensive. Um, every country has a different price and more or less they're close to each other, but there are some variances. And I've been told that the Australian one is the most expensive. Um, fact check that for yourself. Um, you don't need to do it in the country where you live. You can go to another country and oh yeah. And by the way, you need to provide a, a proof of you being in the country when you're applying. Um, the way that I did that was I had some letters that were sent to me um, and I was able to pr provide documentation that I was in Norway at the time. Uh, my friend who did it in Jakarta, he just went to the embassy and, and provided a letter from the hotel that he was staying in that hotel. There are a number of ways to do it. I've heard of people taking pictures with a newspaper showing that they are in the country reading the newspaper that day. So there's a few different ways to go about it. Um, 
yeah, I think the process was super easy. I just submitted the documents. They asked me a couple of times to provide a, a couple of more documents. Uh, I paid up front. That's a little bit scary because they say like, you're gonna have to pay whether you get permitted or not. Um, but fundamentally, I think the DTV visa is priced uh, very reasonably. You know, I don't think that's expensive. Um, for a five-year visa, multiple entry, I can come and go into the country uh, as many times as I want, the visa is still going to last for five years. And every time I enter, I can stay in Thailand for 180 days. Plus, I have the chance to uh, pay a small fee and I can extend it by another 180 days. And I can do that once a year. So basically, for five years straight, I can stay in Thailand for uh, 360 days every year. But as I said, every time I leave the country, like if I go to Vietnam or if I go back to Norway, every time I come back, the clock resets and uh, it's another 180 days. Super easy, super quick. Um, yeah, very, very convenient. Um, one thing that I had to do that's a good piece of advice is when you get to immigration after your plane touchdown, I had to remind them that I have the DTP visa, that's not automatic. So basically I have a picture on my phone of the DTP visa with the information and because my application was digital, every like everything about my visa is uh, inside my phone. Uh, I also have a printout when I travel, but basically I had to tell them that I have it. Um, I don't think the girl that was handling my immigration has seen this very much because she was talking with her colleague um, and like trying to ask like, what is this? What's going on? Um, but fundamentally, or in the end, I got a stamp and it says 180 days and I can basically stay here until April uh, on this current uh, visa. Yeah, very easy, uh, highly recommend it. Another warning though is there is no work permit with this. So I cannot work for a Thai company with this one. I cannot work in Thailand with this one. In my case, that's not an issue because I work with a Norwegian company, but yeah, that's how it works. So you gotta make sure that you have your ducks in a row when it comes to this. Um, you can work and earn your money outside of Thailand. That's not an issue, but yeah, no employment permit. So yeah, you basically just select what type of visa you want. In my case, I wanted the DTV visa as the workation option. If you go to their uh, online portal, you're going to be able to see everything as well. It's quite intuitive. Um, they ask for all the documents that you need to provide. Um, and uh, yeah, if you have some questions about the DTV visa process, feel free to write it in the questions down below. Uh, you can use the comment section for this. And um, yeah, I highly recommend that you use moosewriter.com as well. That's our new project. Um, geared to provide information for people that are traveling, working as a digital nomad. Uh, if you want to get into the lifestyle, if you want to learn how to do certain things, Moose Rider is your best resource for that. Um, there's also a lot of free articles that you should check out. Um, Moose Rider is not free, but it's super cheap. Um, and uh, yeah, check it out. Furthermore, I also want to say that when you're traveling as a nomad, please make sure that you take care of yourself. Accidents will happen from time to time. I use a nomad insurance called Safety Wing. I think it's an amazing service. And uh, for the price, I think it's like 50 bucks. It's in that range anyway. I personally get coverage for a lot of things that can go wrong especially centered around health, but also some theft for electronics and things like that. I recommend that you check out Safety Wing as well. I'm going to put a link to Safety Wing in the description in this video as well, so that you can go and check it out. If you go traveling, don't go without insurance and Safety Wing is super nice. Highly recommend that. I've been using it for a long time now. So yeah, two thumbs up for that one. Um, yeah, with that, I think we're going to cut this video. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one.